On this slide, we can see a part of small intestine. Stain is hematoxylin nosin. Name of the slide is Ursiniosis. It is an intestinal infection caused by the bacteria Ursina enterocolitica. And there are three forms of this disease. The first is abdominal or gastroenterocolitic form when stomach, small intestine, and part of colon are affected. The second is appendicular form when appendix is affected predominantly. And finally, the third one is septic form. On this slide, we can see a terminal part of filum, which is the typical affection site of this infection. The type of affection is usually catarrhal or ulcerative catarrhal enteritis. At low magnification, we can see mucous membrane of the terminal part of filum, as well as submucous layer and the muscular layer. The mucous membrane is edematous, that's why the intestinal lumen is narrowing. At high magnification, we can find the following typical microscopical changes. At first, very pronounced hyperplasia of aggregated lymphoid follicles and ulcerative defect at the site of lymphoid tissue hyperplasia can be found. Secondly, all the layers of intestinal wall are infiltrated with neutrophils, macrophages, eosinophils, and plasma cells. The neutrophilic infiltration is mostly expressed in mucous and submucous layers of intestine. Sometimes, the neutrophil infiltrations get an appearance of so-called crypt abscesses. Prognosis of abdominal form of ursinosis is usually favorable. Number of cases, the disease can be complicated by intestinal bleeding and perforation of intestinal wall that leads to peritonitis. On this slide, we can see histological section of lung tissue. It is stained by hematoxylin and nosin, and name of the slide is hemorrhagic pneumonia at parainfluenza. Parainfluenza is influenza-like acute infectious disease caused by the parainfluenza viruses and characterized by the predominant affection of respiratory airways and moderate intoxication. Mild, moderate, and severe forms are distinguished. Here, on this slide, it is a severe form of parainfluenza infection when the lung tissue lesion in the form of hemorrhagic pneumonia is found. At low magnification, we can see considerable pathological changes in lung tissue. The alveoli are filled with exudate, as it usually happens at any pneumonia. Inflammatory hyperemia and destructive changes in epithelial line of bronchioles and small bronchi are found. At high magnification, the alveoli are filled with a hemorrhagic exudate and reached with erythrocytes. We can also find lymphocytes, macrophages, and some other cells there. Presence of GN multinucleated cells, its another peculiarity, can be seen on this slide. On this slide, we can see a brain tissue with meninges. Stain is hematoxylinosin. Name of the slide is purulent meningococcal meningitis. Generally, there are following forms of the meningococcal infection. There are meningococcal nasopharyngitis, meningococcal meningitis, meningococcal encephalomeningitis, and finally, meningococcal sepsis. At meningococcal meningitis, the pure matter is affected in the form of purulent inflammation. At low magnification, the substance of the brain tissue and somewhat thickened pure matter are clearly seen. At high magnification, 
two main morphological changes are to be noted. At first, very pronounced inflammatory hypermia typical for acute inflammation. Secondly, and which is the most important, the pia matter is edematous and thickened as it is infiltrated by polymorphonuclear leukocytes, means neutrophils. Just due to the presence of great amount of neutrophils, we define this inflammation as a purulent. It is another slide with a lung tissue. Stain is hematoxylinosine. Name of the slide is pneumocystic pneumonia. The pneumocystic pneumonia is caused by the yeast like fungus pneumocystis gerovici. It is an opportunistic infection, and the pneumocystic pneumonia occurs mainly in patients with immune deficiency resulting from HIV infection, AIDS, or immune suppression treatment. At low magnification, the lung tissue is non-homogeneous and the most of alveoli are filled with exudate. The nature and type of exudate observed at high magnification are typical for pneumocystic pneumonia. In the lumina of alveoli, we can see eosinophilic exudate with single blood cells and few fibrin. This exudate has typical foamy appearance stipulated by presence of great amount of pathogens which are fungus pneumocystis. A part of that, the intervella septa are thickened and moderately infiltrated by lymphocytes and histiocytes. Also, to confirm the diagnosis of pneumocystic pneumonia, a special stain can be applied. It is Gomori metanamine silver staining. While using this stain, the pathogens are curled in black color. On this slide, we can see histological section of the skin. The stain is hematoxylinosin. Name of this slide is deep dermatomycosis. It is another example of opportunistic infections found in patients suffering from immune deficiency, for example, in HIV. And here it is a fungal lesion of the skin. At low magnification, we can see epidermis and dermis, which occupies the greedy part of that slide. Also, foci of hemorrhages can be seen on this slide. At high magnification, some branching eosinophilic formations are found in dermis. They are gifi of pathogenic fungi. A part of that can be noted the absence of expressed inflammatory reaction and some features of Disorganization of stromal connective tissue. It is another slide with the skin. The stain is hematoxylinosin. The name of the slide is Kaposhi sarcoma. Kaposhi sarcoma or hemangiosarcoma is a malignant reticular histiocytic tumor originated from blood vessels and localized predominantly on the skin. It is frequently met in patients with immune deficiency at HIV infection or AIDS. Such tumors, according to etiological classification, belong to epidemic type. At low magnification, the epidermis and dermis are clearly seen. In dermis, we can find highly increased number of cells as well as plenty of heparamic capillaries. At higher magnification, the tumor mass is presented by numerous polymorphic cells looking like endothelial cells and fibroblasts 
and showing the patterns of cellular atypism. There are also many new formed microcirculation vessels, some of which are filled with blood cells. A mild lymphohistiocytic infiltration is also present there. The typical secondary changes of this tumor are hemorrhages and necrosis areas. Prognosis generally is unfavorable. The patients die as a result of bleeding into the inner organs or cancerous cachexia.